Hi everyone, my name is Jelle van der Beek. I am the lead engine programmer for Vanguard Games and I would like to demonstrate a memory analysis tool called Heap Inspector. Before we go to the live demo, I'd like to take a minute to explain some of the concepts of this program. Heap Inspector is specifically targeted at C++ applications. Whenever you allocate or free memory in your application, data is sent over the network to a PC client. And this PC client captures that data and provides real-time views about all of your allocation behavior. It is currently running on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 and PC. And in the past I have had similar concepts running on the Wii, the PlayStation 2 and Xbox One. It is a concept that is easily portable to other platforms as well. Okay, I would like to briefly discuss some of the things about this concept that I like. It's very non-intrusive, there are only several lines of code needed and you're up and running in no time. You just initialize Heap Inspector and off it goes. And we have a live network connection with the game so we get real-time feedback and what we generally just do is we play the game, start shooting things and we look at all of the real-time feedback in the tool and see, and see if there are any problems within the game. If there are, we just pause and inspect what's happening. Because we're offloading all of the dirty work to a separate device, a separate PC, there is very little impact on memory or performance in your game. If I would need to summarize what Heap Inspector is all about, it would probably be about memory consumption, memory fragmentation, memory leaks and in a way memory performance. Let's start the show. We are currently running our upcoming game called Gatling Gears on our PlayStation 3 dev kit. The game is waiting for us to connect, so let's connect to the PlayStation 3. We see the immediate feedback of the game in several live views. Here in the top left graph we see the number of bytes that have been allocated by the game. And here on the bottom graph you can see the number of blocks that have been allocated. If we want we can manually zoom and pan the graphs, but we can also use the auto zoom feature to follow the graphs automatically. Heap Inspector also supports the use of multiple heaps, and as you may know the PlayStation 3 has both local and main memory. So if we click the local memory using this drop down list, we switch over to the memory usage of the local memory. Let's go back to the main memory for now. At any moment in time we can create a snapshot of the current state of the game. If we type in a name of the snapshot over here, for instance menu, and click this camera icon on the left, a snapshot is created and it is displayed in the snapshot view here on the bottom. There's no need to stay connected so I'm gonna disconnect the session. By selecting a snapshot and clicking the call graph button, we can create an overview of all of the allocations in our game using a call graph. In the call graph view we can see all of the functions that allocated memory and we can browse through the tree. And if we click on a function we can see the source code along with the line in the source code that allocated the memory. Here in the columns on the right you can see the total number of bytes and the block count. And here on the bottom you can see the source code. This really is a fantastic way to view all of your memory consumption in minutes instead of days perhaps. I have launched a second session of Gatling Gears and we're currently running in the game and our player character is doing nothing actually but there still seems to be a lot of allocation activity going on so that would be something I would like to investigate further. I can use this drop-down list to select a different length of the horizontal axis 
so I can see frame allocations a little bit better. We're going to look into this frame allocations in a second, but let me show you what happens when my player character starts firing. You can see that there are a lot of allocations when I start using the weaponry of my player character, and I'm really not too happy about that. So I would like to investigate what's going on here as well. I am now going to inspect what is going on in the frame allocations. So I'm going to zoom into a single frame. And if I click on any section of this graph, it will recreate the memory state as it was at that moment in time. I can create a snapshot of the state, so I'm going to call it frame 1. And I click the camera icon again to create a snapshot. I'm also going to click on this little peak right here and create another snapshot so that we can compare these two snapshots. Let's open up the call graph view again by clicking the first snapshot and pressing the call graph button. To start comparing the snapshots, we need to enter the differences mode. I can now select the second snapshot from this drop down list. We now see two call graphs and each call graph shows only the differences with the other snapshot. So if we browse through this call graph, we see exactly what kind of allocations ha have been performed within the two markers. By using the history of the allocation graphs and by creating multiple snapshots, we can inspect per frame allocations as we've just demonstrated. But we can also inspect any peaks, like we've seen with the firing of the weapons, or any unexpected behavior at all. You can also find memory leaks by doing state comparisons. Uh, I'd like to divide them in two categories, the regular leaks, and you can track those by making a snapshot, for instance, in the menu of a game, then launching the game, going back to the menu, and creating another snapshot. If there are any differences between those states, there's probably memory leak. And those are memory leaks that can usually be tracked by um, other tools as well. But there are also leaks I personally like to call logical leaks. And that happens when there is memory continuously being allocated during the game. And something perhaps like a memory manager will free up all the memory when exiting the game. But still, if you look at the graphs, the memory will continue to go up until your application probably crashes. And you can find those memory leaks simply by making a snapshot in, at the beginning of the game and somewhere at the end of the game and making a comparison. And you will easily find those memory leaks as well.